Oh, well, Hello, and um, oh, oh, oh. hang on. <laughs> Sorry, I'm being useless here. I'm never going to be able to top that hello for greeting now. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Guess what's going to be the cold open for this episode? Yeah. <laughs> Before Thanks, the titles. Sir. Perfect. <laughs> Casey Harwood. Um, so I've done a little bit of digging around and I've discovered... Ricky Grove, fog comes in on little cat feet. <laughs> Phil Rice, this is the best film that I've seen all year and maybe ever. Damien Valentine, use the machinima, Luke. Hello and welcome for another episode of And Now for Something Completely Machinima. Now, one of the longest running arguments in geek culture is DC versus Marvel. And in a way, we're going to be uh, doing that this week with uh, our look at two videos. Uh, one is Spider-Man, which is Marvel, and we've got DC covered by a Batman uh, video. Uh, I chose the Spider-Man one and Tracy chose the Batman one. Um, so, Tracy, why don't you go first, and uh, we'll talk about this uh, Batman film. Sure. Oh, okay. Well, so, uh, yeah, this one's called Vengeance, Batman fan-made cinematic, and it's been made in Unreal Engine 5.3 by Solo Filmmaking. Um, now, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a back alley fight scene between cops and crims with, with the cops in trouble from a brutal assault and our hero turning up almost in time to save them, but not, uh, roughing up the crims and then answering that age-old question, who are you really? Hence the title of the movie. Now, I picked this because it's a well-choreographed fight scene and the detail in Unreal Engine is amazing, but there are some other things I wanted to discuss with you um, as well. Now, there are a few problems with the sound edit. The footfalls don't match the movement or the environment that well. There's way too much swearing in this. And actually, the fighting is rather too brutal for the little we um, know about the characters uh, and who they are, which kind of indicates some storytelling issues for me. And that's um, quite an interesting point, because we are now seeing lots of examples of Unreal being used. But the thing that's really missing is the stories and their kind of compelling presentation. Now, I appreciate, however, this is a this is a fan made short. It's been inspired by Batman films and also by the Tokyo back alley assets, um, which have been created by Black Medium Small. Um, and that creator had um, put them on the marketplace and our solo filmmaker here had picked them up out of the marketplace and you know decided that's what he wanted to use. The, it's it's basically the incredible detail and the beauty in these particular assets that motivated him to create this short film around them. And I get that, but with a more emotionally engaging story, there might be more reason to actually watch this. And then I picked up on something else, which is that he said that reflecting on his portfolio of 60 short films over six years that he's made, he noticed that his Batman themed content consistently got most views. And because he's made so many of these types of shorts uh, using Batman as his inspiration, he struggled for an original take. So he's used chat GPT to develop the idea and create the punchlines. And then he's used 11 labs to add what he describes as an emotional layer to the interaction, enabling him to make dynamic adjustments to the voice. And I guess that then might also have led him to think about how he might present the story. So he settled on what he describes as a, a shift to a Hong Kong style, reminiscent of sleeping dogs, emphasizing details such as water, blood and reflection. So I wanted to highlight that um, this is a process because whilst I think on the one hand, the use of the AI is a great help to refine things, I feel the thing it's less good at is helping to script characters and create story off bat. And that's not a problem to do with the graphic quality here at all, but to do with the craft of creating compelling characters and a plot. And so far, however, I think there's very little emphasis within Unreal 
or for that matter, any other creative community on this particular aspect of the process in using AI that I've seen. So I'm hoping we see much more discussion about um, the aspect of kind of creating story uh, going forwards, because I think it, I think we need it. Um, but it's also led me to ask what to, um, to what extent AI can ever be a tool to replace craft-based creativity. Now, I was on a discussion panel a few weeks ago um, when this question came up about AI enabling everyone to be creative and isn't that great? And I said at the time that I don't think that will be true because the ability to create compelling and engaging works is also about tacit knowledge and craft. So my thoughts here are that whilst I think the process of using these tools to refine, refine craft is worthwhile, uh, also bear in mind what you, the creator, brings to the process as a, as a human too. And I would definitely encourage this particular creator to put more emphasis on the story. There's actually a making of film, um, which I'll put a link on the show notes to as well. Um, if you can stand getting through the adverts, because this guy certainly is clearly uh, trying to monetize the content. But um, I'd be really interested to hear what you guys sort of say to, um, say about this one. What did you think? First, I just want to say thank you uh, for telling me that this story and and it was created with ChatGPT because I feel kind of liberated now to go ahead and say uh, what I really think. Uh, and the only criticism then of is it solo soul creator? Is that uh, the solo story? filmmaking? Yeah. Yeah, it was his decision to use that in that way. Uh, because I was ready to, I was like, as I shared before we started recording, I was pondering how can I talk about this film and not completely destroy my, my I think, reputation as a fairly nice guy. Uh, because I'm, I was just ready to eviscerate it. Uh, now I feel comfortable doing so. Uh, and maybe with even a little, little bit less heat. Heat, yeah, mm. because it's just a fact. Uh, having experimented with uh, with ChatGPT uh, significantly, to just mainly just to learn and 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 explore what it can do, I found that it's excellent at the kind of task that you might attribute to Grammarly. Are you familiar with Grammarly? That that it's in, it basically usually works as a browser plugin, and it'll it'll help give you tips and fix your grammar to to be more clear and and you know change the tone of what you're saying. But if you were to, I mean, if you were to ask Grammarly to actually write something to express how you feel, well, first of all, that's not even an option, and there's a good reason for that. Uh, it's not good at that, and story wise. Uh, yeah, every uh, experiment that I, every experiment that I've done with it, is the the outcome is so bad because my thought was, <clears throat> all right, let me back up a bit. For me, when AI, in in regards to artwork, let's say, when that gets to the point where it can do what it does, let's say perfectly, you know, like where there's no flaws. I think I'll lose all interest in it at that point. Mm -hmm. I'm interested in it from a comedian's point of view. I think it's hilarious what AI art does sometimes, the way that it mangles hands and and faces and and uh, it's just it's hilarious. Like it's it's uh it would be difficult to get a person to be able to create that because our instinct is toward order and toward reality mm -hmm. for the most part there's obviously artists that, that that don't adhere to that and that's great uh but you know that's my interest in ai is that it's kind of broken um uh, and so i would experiment with chat gpt thinking maybe it would be funny to have chat chat gpt construct i mean you can tell it to construct a screenplay and you give it a sentence or two of what you want and it and how many words it should be and it'll just do it and i thought well maybe i could experiment with that and the end result would be the text equivalent of mangled hands it would be something funny 
And then I'd make that into a movie. And it'd be funny because it's broken. It's so bad that it's not even funny. Uh, it's just so awful. So the word derivative doesn't do, do it justice. I'm talking generally. Chad GPT trying to, let's say, craft narrative. It's so bad. It's it's not funny like the, the AI art can be. Uh, and it's certainly not trending towards realism or, let's say, success at all. Like, it's bad. Really bad. Um, so I've kind of directed a lot of my ire at chat GPT in general. So we can go ahead and adapt to that here now that, that, yeah, this is bad. That the, the story craft it's broken. Um, it, it, it's disjointed. Uh, I'm very, I'm actually really thrilled that we can lay this at the feet of chat GPT <laughs> that I'm not, that I'm not eviscerating soul creator and that he, if he or she, if they listen to this, will know that, that it's not them that's being criticized here. Except I question the decision of doing this. If it was just for expediency, then okay, so be it. But, you know, just as a, you know, pro tip, if you're going to try and use one of these, you know, chat, like chat GPT or a similar tool to mine ideas and, and, you know, stuff like that, man, you can't take the output straight from that and and use it as a screenplay. You just can't. It needs, at the very least, it needs human touch. And this, in, in this film's case, I'm not even sure any of it would have been worth saving. Like, even the structural integrity of the story of this is just, there's no better word for it than it's just broken. And that's all chat GPT. Uh, again, I thank you for mentioning it because now I recognize what I'm seeing here. At first, I just thought, that this is something impossibly bad made by a human because there's plenty of stuff like that out there that's impossibly bad and made by humans but this has that particular brokenness that really only comes from the artificial intelligence world um so yeah i'm 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 actually i'm like really happy that it's <laughs> that it that it sucks because it's chat gpt you know um because now i don't have to to be an a-hole you know what? It's um, the first real example I've seen of somebody using it in this way. And yeah. it just lives up to my expectation as well, given all the tests that we've talked about and been doing. So it's, Let me I, try and think of what the creator's name was. We reviewed, uh, I picked one of his films a few months back. Is it Dean Corrigan? He did the, he's doing this the series of shorts, Denver Pluto. Um, they were little bitty, like sci-fi shorts the one that i picked had the ai computer talking to oh. the the woman character the pilot yeah i and remember that yes her voice was actually 11 labs and remember we were talking about that the computer sounds more human than the that's right yes, than the human. Yes. yeah but he uses he used many different layers of ai tools including i believe he mentioned chat gpt to help kind of as an idea of mine, but what he didn't do is take direct output from that and call it the screenplay and produce it. That would have been just horrible result. And he knew that. So I think there is maybe a, a role for it. Although honestly, I've, I've done some experimenting even just with idea generation, like just on a, the lowest level, just, I, and it's just, it's just awful. It just is awful. That's just not, you know, this type of AI, that is not what it does. You know, the, the however it does work, I'm not going to pretend that I understand every aspect of it, but, you know, it's, it's a, the generative AI process. No, it doesn't, that doesn't, that's like using the math part of the brain to try and write a, a musical song. Yes, there's 20th century composers who did that. The music's awful. So yeah. Berg, was that one of the names? Anyway. So uh, so that's that. Uh that's that accounts for a lot of the brokenness. There are some beautiful moments in this cinematography-wise. A lot of that's just 
good use of the engine. You know, I mean, this this was the scenes were clearly crafted by somebody with experience. Um, there's there are some there's a lot of audio issues, like way too many. Um, it sounds like from the description that he was. Uh, he'd kind of imposed some time limits on himself and really pressured himself to get it done in a certain amount of time. I think he worked on it a month and a half. Um, that's that's pretty fast for a, for a short this complex to build from scratch and do. Um, so maybe that maybe it accounts to that. Maybe it's the fact that it was truly a solo creation, and not everybody has every skill set. You know, so you may be great at animating, and maybe not so great at sound. Or you may be great at animating and sound and not so great at writing. You know, we've seen that. So how many times has that come up on the show, right? Yeah, that, that, absolutely. Uh, mm. Yeah. So it it could just be, okay, somebody trying to do everything and they haven't filled out all those skill sets yet. But there's a lot of sound flaws. A lot, there's a lot of lip sync flaws too, which there's not really an engine related excuse for that. Um, I don't know if he used iClone, um, you know, uh, Aculips for the... Re I don't know, but it didn't, it didn't turn out. Some of it, it was so bad. I thought that for a moment, wait, is this whole thing dubbed, you know, like another language? I really did. I, I was like, it was so off. So I'm not sure how to account for that. And, it, but it was, it was distracting. The fight scenes were well-crafted. I agree with your, your, uh, your taste evaluation on them, uh, Tracy, in terms of it's violent even by by the latest incarnation of Batman standards. You know? That's too uh, much. The, for me. the latest incarnation of Batman is pretty dark and pretty violent. Yeah. But it's not gory. And this this takes it a little bit further. So uh, you know, it's just not to my taste. Um Yeah, I think that's that's everything that I wanted to say. Um it was I don't know. I, I got to be honest. I, I don't know how much I enter into a Batman fan, fan film expecting high things um, because more than any other DC or Marvel character, Batman has had more screen time from Hollywood and TV and then also uh, in fan films than anybody. I think anybody in the whole thing i mean it's just been done and done and done and done and did this break any new ground for batman or or show us a different side or whatever no it didn't and it's because we've seen all the sides you know it's really i i guess i'll to give him credit it's really hard to be innovative with batman because so much has been done in so many different ways from Adam West, all, I mean, just that end of the spectrum, just the crazy comical, you know, zany Saturday morning cartoon type Batman, all the way to the modern goth, you know, gloomy uh, Robert Patterson one, Pattinson, which I love, by the way. Uh, but it's just been done to death, you know? So, and I think ultimately that, that is part of what had to have, in addition to his own experience making these films with this character, it's the fact that, you know, how do you be innovative with that character? No one, I, I feel like that's maybe what drew him towards, well, let's try this approach to get get a new idea. Yeah. Um, and it so, didn't work. Yeah, it didn't work. And I, I, I guess without being mean, I hope he knows that. Like, I hope he realizes that. Um, he seems from the description to be pretty pretty pleased as punch about with himself about the film. And that's great. But I hope he realizes this isn't a way forward. Um uh, you know, I have to think that that the the first page of YouTube comments I saw were just, you know, bow down and worship comments. So I don't know. Somebody's gonna get on there and tell him what's what, you know, I would think. <laughs> they kind of always do on YouTube, whether they're right or not. So but yeah, this isn't, yeah, that's where the flaws all emanate from. And when you mentioned that, you know, the, the process that we used to create it, it just, it just explained everything to me. Um, I still ended up talking about it way too long, but you know, that's me. <laughs> yeah, what so. did you think, Damien? What, what was your thoughts? 
Uh, very similar to Breath of View. Um, I, I watched it and I felt like the, the di- there was something that wasn't feeling right about the dialogue. As a visually, it was a very stunning film, um, and the assets they're a good match for Gotham City, especially the the more recent incarnations. Um, but something about the dialogue was really bothering me, and it, it you know I wasn't sure if it was someone whose English wasn't necessarily their first language or something like that. And then at the end, it said uh, Chat GPD. And I thought, oh, that explains a lot. Uh, uh, I didn't even see the end credits. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I feel like ChatGPT writes dialogue like you would expect from a 19, an early 1980s television commercial. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Or maybe even earlier than that, where the audience, clearly the advertisers creating it think the audience isn't very sophisticated. And we weren't, right? We, yeah. we weren't. Cinema and cinematic language and the type if think about the types of movies that were made back then the 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 ones that were intellectually challenging or they were unusual more unusual i think than they are now now the standard i think has been elevated to, in the tv realm with shows like the sopranos and breaking bad and 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 many shows in, in on on in the bbc as well that just the the bar is way up now uh, and so advertising has, it's its unusual that it, outside of the realm of parody, that uh, that dialogue sounds so stiff and, and I don't know, forced. But yeah, no, I agree, Damien. Sorry to interrupt. That's all right. Um, so I was thinking, well, if you're going to go to chat GPT to create the script for you, um, this is obviously taken directly from that output and incorporated straight into the film. Yeah. It needed a lot of editing to the <laughs> point where you might as well just write the whole thing yourself. Um, because at the, the very bare bones of this script is a Batman story. You could imagine that, but it needed a lot of work to be a good script. Um, but as an experiment, like I can appreciate that he wanted to try to do something different, and this is what he was trying. As an experiment, I can completely understand why he's doing that, because you're right, Phil, there's been a lot of takes on Batman, so it's really hard to do anything new. And as much as I like the Robert Pattinson Batman, it felt a lot like Christopher Nolan's Batman films, but darker. And there's nothing wrong with that, because they're both no, I agree. takes on it. Yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, it's like, I get it. You want to try, it's an experiment to try to do something you with batman and um that I, I don't think it really works as that yeah but yeah you know as an experiment that's fine do it put it out there see what reaction you get but um i'm gonna say to this creator if you wanted two more batman stories this isn't necessarily the best way to to go about it um if you want to do something different for batman my advice would be don't copy the the latest incarnations of batman because they are going for that really dark gritty look try and t- do a very different spin like we haven't had a... I know, Between Adam the asked, scenes, uh, Damien. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that we were talking about before in the previous episode. But yeah, um, you know, Adam West Batman, obviously very comedy focused, uh, very campy. That's not been done for a very long time. Because uh, even uh, the the uh, Tim Burton Batman, it was very... It wasn't strictly serious but obviously more serious than the, the yeah no there was definite there was definite comic elements there and that's that's originally part of the way batman was was handled i mean in the comics there the, he and the banter between he and robin and whatnot it, it had some wit to it you know and it's it that's one thing that has you know much as i love the christopher nolan batman and i like i like this new one i think it's got potential Mainly because I just I think Robert Pattinson is is you know future he's a great actor yeah I really I really really like what he brings but it's lost all humor like all there Batman's not fun in the same way yeah and you're right that would be ground that okay it's it's not completely new it doesn't have to be new though you know um, you, can, you find a way to do something that's dark and gritty. Also has that element of humor in it because uh, Christopher Nolan's Batman 
for the most part very serious but there were some there were some jokes in it and i'm not just talking about the joker being fun to watch he, yeah. th- there was some good banter between him and alfred that made you laugh and bring some more of that into it uh it doesn't have to be uh so dark serious and completely humorous i, I get it batman's a d- dark character but have some of that humor in it as well because that makes it a little bit more fun you know what it needs it needs a, it because he likes gore so it needs to be a Tarantino Batman film. <laughs> there we go. Because that would account for all the language, right? Yeah. Yeah. And all the all the violence. But then also there's moments where you can't help but laugh. So, yeah. yeah. Anyway. But yeah, officially, it's a very impressive film. I think I did think the lip movement was a little bit too much. Turn that down a little bit, and you have a very stunning film. Uh, but yeah, that's my, that's my uh, feedback for this film. Um, starting to look at not necessarily the best approach for generating a story. Uh, so I hope uh, Solo Creator keeps keeps that in mind for the next for his next project. And uh, I'd like to see what he does next. Because obviously he's got talent. I don't, oh, yeah. I, I don't just um, see this video and then stop making stuff. Uh, we uh, we do like to uh, encourage creators to, to keep improving their craft and to create more of whatever it is they create. Um, so, uh, don't think we're trying to tell you to stop because we're not doing that. We just work. We're on trying it. to tell ChatGPT to stop. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> just, just stop, stop what you're doing. More human yeah. in the loop is what I'd say. Absolutely. All right, let's move on to the the Marvel side of things with the the Spider Man film. Um, the Spider Man action figure animations. Now, this came to me actually through the uh, newsletter that Real Illusion sent out. Um, and uh, it was a. They'd found this guy, and they did a sort of behind the scenes thing about how he he was doing these videos, and I did think about linking that, but that's not really machinima as such. It's more of a behind the scenes documentary. I thought, let's talk about what he's actually making, and then we can put the uh, behind the things in the show notes. Um, so what he's doing is he's using his phone to th- scan his action figure collection, which is obviously lots of Marvel um, characters, in particular Spider-Man. So he, he puts it on a black square and he walks around it with his phone, getting several times to get different angles of it. And then he's importing that model from his phone into iClone as a fully animated character, which he's then generating um, animated shorts for. Now I'm going to admit there's no real story to what he's doing because they're very short clips. Um, it's more of a technical exercise, I think, and he's having a lot of fun with it. But we've never seen anything like that in the show. So I thought, this is something very different, and I wanted to choose it this month just because it is so different from anything we've seen before. So, uh, yeah, what do you guys think? If you want me to go next, I'm happy to if you want. Okay, sure. Cool. Well, I just I, I had to watch this about four times because I thought, what the hell was that that I've just seen? <laughs> Under a minute and a half of the most crazy fight action using these 3D scan figurines. Um, I mean, God, I've not seen anything like it. And and you know what? You know, you can clearly see that this is a person who loved his box of action men characters so much he just didn't want to leave them under the bed. Under the bed. So he's used them as inspiration to take them to a whole new level of play. The quality of these animations is pretty amazing, I think. They're, they're really very smooth. Um, and I think what I like about them is the, is the sound editing that he's put over them. He's, he's clearly got an incredible workflow and is evidently, a, you know, he's, he clearly understands what he's trying to do with each of these characters in each of the shorts that he's, he's making, um, which... Got to say, is not aimed at YouTube, but at Instagram. So it's really short, sharp kind of stuff. I think primarily started out as an action figure and toy collector. And these animations were a way of keeping his collection going. But I suspect that maybe now what he's got is the other way around, that the demand for his animations means that he's got um, to collect more figures. Um and I think that's kind of an interesting reflection on the kind of hobbyist journey that um, which he's taken, really. I mean, it's well beyond personal collection to this kind of shared enterprise and, and is possibly something that 
I think maybe museums might be interested in as a way of animating their collections for a new generation mm. of visitors and followers. I thought that was kind of really interesting. But he talks about it in the context of what he's doing as stop mo animation. And it's not really that that he's doing. It's it's you know, I guess it might have been if what he was doing was photographing them and then moving the the character and then rephotographing it. And, and I I can kind of see why he might think that what he's doing is not is stop mo, but it's actually proper virtual production. And I and it kind of made me think: is what what we're looking at here a kind of analog machinima? Maybe I don't know because the, you know the game it's, it's clearly inspired by the, the the games that these characters are, are um you know are, are in but it's not really a, you know a computer video game that they're coming from it's much more analog kind of play that you you um you see these kind of things uh you know in in, in more of like a, a physical form of, of game based content um, so, yeah, that was my thoughts. I thought it was a really interesting pick. Not seen anything like this before. It was, um, yeah, really interesting the way he's gone about doing it. Yeah. So, yeah, I've never I've never seen... You mentioned, Damien, we haven't seen anything like this on the show, but, I mean, I've, I've never seen anyone do this at all yet. It, maybe he's the first, I don't know, but... Uh, um, it was fascinating. I think maybe the... This is really a silly thing to fixate on, but the thing that was most enjoyable to me about it was that as i watched it and then just read a little bit of how he did it i thought hey i know how to do everything that he did to make this happen i mean i don't think i could execute this as well as him um because there's there's that's a skill set you really have to work on action and you know animations and getting all that to line up and stuff but i'm talking about the scanning of the figure the uh bringing it in and rigging it as a character in iClone, and then of course uh, setting up these animated scenes. I think I even understand how he did the backgrounds. I'm curious what your your guess or thought or knowledge would be on this, Damien, but because the background almost felt like a 3D photo That's of what the I was room. Thinking. That's because what I was thinking it doesn't too. really, it everything kind of stays central and it's this very, it's a realistic looking room, but it's from a very each each of the shorts is from a very particular point of view. So I'm thinking maybe a 360 camera or something, uh, which is very clever. Mm. Um, Freedom, the guy who does all the uh, iClone tutorials, I've seen him do a tutorial on on that on how to quickly mock up a background that's you know out of wherever you're at, um, and it works perfectly for this scenario because you're not having to do it with life size characters. These are you know, he's got everything kind of scaled to where they're like action figure size. You know, that's what it looks yeah. like. So I just found it fascinating. Um, they're fun. I can totally see this this content performing well on on uh, Instagram or TikTok. Um, yeah, really neat. And I, I loved the uh, the interview that he did with uh, Reillusion Magazine. Uh, that interview was from back in October, I think. Um, Seems like a very sharp guy, very nice. He's a good communicator. So when he was talking about explaining, you know, how he did what he did and what inspires him and stuff, it was uh, it was very enjoyable. Uh, felt kind of like a like a kindred spirit in a way, you know, another basically solo creator out there uh, just making what he loves. And I think that that whatever the specific origin of that love is, if it's for the figures or if it's for filmmaking or maybe both but it comes through in work like this that uh it's hard to quantify what that is right but it's the person who made there's talk that like that good chefs put that into their food right yeah that when they have a positive energy or attitude and they're baking something or cooking something it ends up coming through in the flavor of the food and it's kind of like that that's the sense I get off of this film is this was loved by the person who made it. And how can you, unless you're really cynical, how can you not enjoy it purely on that basis? You know, even if yeah. nothing else, even if you don't care about Marvel or anything, it's just when you see somebody that has really injected love into something they're making, man, you know, bring it on. I love it. So 
Um, it gave me a fleeting temptation to, because I've got a massive collection of Star Wars figures. Ooh. So I was kind of like, hmm. but no. I have the <laughs> I got, very same I got way too much on my agenda. No, no, I'm going to have to wait and someone else will do that now. So, um, yeah, just a lot of fun. Um, I think the only criticism I would have is at least on the YouTube version that we watched. There's some aspects of the video fidelity that aren't great. Like the actual render quality of the video. But since these were produced as shorts and then probably brought in for a compilation on YouTube, maybe quality got lost there. You know, maybe I should go seek out the originals on Instagram. They may end up looking uh, sharper. But the image was just a little bit, there was some kind of digital distortion here and there. And like like maybe they had a, a high keyframes value when they rendered or something like that, you know, where there's there's that digital stuff that happens and stuff. That was just a tad distracting, but, uh, you know, I could tell that what was underneath that, the, the fidelity of the actual uh, production was high. You know, and and a lot of care was taken, um, so it it ended up not not detracting too much from from the enjoyment of it. And again, I recognize this isn't the first generation of this release; it's probably been copied from somewhere. So, um, you know, that can happen. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I I enjoyed this uh, a lot. Um, I'm I was surprised to learn that Chat GPT wrote the scripts for this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah uh, just say. just for those for that for those in the audience uh who, who uh there's no sarcasm in in your world that that was sarcastic of course <laughs> i don't think there was any chat gbt involved here at all so yeah great stuff great pick yeah you know, i'm glad you uh both enjoyed it because it just seemed like a, 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 there's not a lot of depth to it but the the way it was made is very impressive and that, that sense of fun that he had making it comes yeah. across him watching it yeah. oh, it was a big piece of it was a big piece of bubble gum is what this was yeah yeah yeah, um, yeah it was good yeah so I, I thought that this had to be my pick for the month because i just it's so different and so much fun yeah um and yeah phil i do have like you i have a collection of star wars figures that i've been thinking i wonder um <laughs> I got some really good stormtroopers, and I thought maybe if I scan them, I'll have some better stormtroopers for Edge of the Empire. You never know. Um, so, yeah, that, that's it for our superhero uh, double bill um, episode. Um, let us know um, what you thought of both films. Um, uh, how do you feel about ChatGPT uh, Chat GPT as a script writing tool? Um, have you used it successfully? Because if you have, we'd like to know because it. Um, <laughs> We haven't seen any good examples of that. Yeah, um, we'll be the judge of that. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, let us know at uh, talk at uh, .com. Um Let us know any other thoughts and feedback you have about the show. And that, that's about it for uh, this week. So uh, thank you and uh, take care. Goodbye. Bye-bye.